Good morning everyone. Thank you for dropping by and watching this video. So today I want to share with you a little how-to for making a little compendium or little storage book for keeping things like stickers or keeping things like um, postage stamps that you might want to use in your junk journals, journaling or card making or other crafts. So here is one that I made as my first prototype. Um, what I've done is just made a single internal section where I can keep all my, well not all of them, but one um, selection of different uh, stickers. So these were all stickers that originally came in little um, sort of like sticker books. So Kath Kidston, Crafty Stickers, um, and another selection of stickers as well. And then over time I used them, including with my cooking and my home produce um, for Christmas gifts and other gifts. And so most of the pages in the sort of sticker book only had a couple of stickers left on each page. So it wasn't as useful and it was harder to see what I had of different size stickers. So I decided to make a little storage um, book that I can then have um, available to me when I'm working. I can even sort of prop it up on the on the desk and um, I can refer to that to decide what size sticker and what um, colour styles I want. So it's quite easy to sort of grab them out and then flick through them and see which stickers I want to have. So um, what I will show you today is how I'm approaching my second um, book which is going to be a stamp um, storage book. So I've got lots of stamps. These are just um, some of my bird selection and butterflies, birds and butterflies. Um, and so I wanna make a place that I can um, keep those in there. So let me show you how I'm approaching it. And it's just slightly different to how I approached my first um, prototype. I've reflected on that process and just thought about where I can make it a bit easier with the, the stitching process. So what I'm using is an old um, calendar page. Now it's a not too thick um, cardboard. Um, it's just a nice sort of weight of, weight of cardboard. Um, and so I'm just putting the, the calendar section on the back. In this one, I actually left the calendar section underneath um, the, yeah, the front of the, uh, underneath this um, this section um, because I knew that you wouldn't really be able to see it anyway and I don't even mind if I see a little few of the, the grid lines I quite like that effect. So what I am doing here is I'm using some regular baking paper so the type of baking paper that you would cook with um, basically big roll catering size so it's quite a nice width across um, depending on the width of yours you might want to yeah you'd need to adapt it to that width or make two sections across the two pages if it wasn't wide enough just to give you a sense of the the sizing um, that I'm doing so we're talking about 25 centimeters um, width and then across each of the pages, um, oops, no, I need to go the other way so I can read from the start, and about 20 centimetres halfway across, so 40 centimetres all the way across. So what I've done with the baking paper, now some people I think would use um, tracing paper for this, but I didn't have any tracing paper on hand, but I had a whole lot of baking paper, including another roll in the, the cupboard um, as well. So I'll just unclip these for a moment um, and show you. I've basically just done a series of folds all the way down to make little pockets which I'll show you shortly, we'll be, we'll be sewing those, to make little pockets that I can put the stamps in. So what I did was I worked out what's the sort of dimensions I'm gonna want for my stamps. And then I drew a little marking on the paper to mark where I needed to do the first fold, which is the sort of bottom fold that will hold the stamp in place. And then where I needed to bring the second fold up to, to make the pocket. So I'll show you just with this piece over here, which ended up being too short for um, this project, but I'll use it to add extra pockets in some places. So what I've done is basically fold it up. So you start by folding, 
folding like that to make one one fold and then your next fold you're then folding it up to make your your second fold and bring it down to make your pocket so what you're wanting to create is various pockets as you go down the page now because the stamps are quite thin I don't mind if my pockets overlap a bit sorry for the rustling paper I'll just get that put to the side so I don't mind that for example this little pocket is overlapping this one because the stamps aren't particularly thick. It's a bit different in the sticker book where I've got quite big um, wads of, sta of um, stickers. So I didn't want to have those pockets too much overlapping. There's a couple of sections where they do, um, but I wanted to keep those um, quite separate. And in this one, I actually just folded each of the, the three rows separately and sewed them in separately. Because this is slightly different and because I'm comfortable um, that the stamps aren't going to be as thick, I've done a single folding process all the way down a single sheet of um, baking paper here. So yeah, basically just folding to make the little, um, at this stage, pockets um, or concertinas um, where you can actually put your stamps and making it the size you want for your stamps or your, your stickers based on that. And you can either think about having your stamps um, yeah, standing up this way, or you might want to put them down that way so you can have both options there. And then down the very bottom here, um, I decided I've got some very small stamps. So I've just folded down this little pocket to make it even um, smaller and I'll just put some stitches in that as well. So let's just move on to the next step. Um, so once I've done all my folding, um, I then slipped the top section of the cardboard into the top part and put a little clip on it like this. And then down the bottom, I did the same process and folded um, the baking paper over and put it underneath there and just made sure that this was clipped right in place. And you want your pockets to all lay nice and flat. And not and to be um, yeah, as even as possible. You will notice if you look caref um, look carefully at this. Um, I haven't actually done like ruled lines across it to make sure all of my pockets were exactly the same. I was basically just lining up on the edge as I folded each of the parts. Now, if you're particular and you want it to be all perfectly even, you'll want to put some markings in and measure it, and then fold each of them to to match up with your um, pencil measuring but I'm quite happy with something being a little bit more rustic. I tend to do things by eye. Now, the other thing you wanna do before you start the next step is um, fold it and just make sure that that middle section um, folds down and has a nice little crease down it because that will just help you with the next step where we're actually going to sew that down. So I'll start that off and then I'll turn off the camera um, for a few moments and finish that off and then I'll come back and, and show you the further further steps. So for this um, we're just going to come through from from the back but in fact something that's quite good to do is to put your little um, puncture holes where you want them going down um, the length. Now I'm not going to make them too close together so you're just going to put them where you want them because it'll make it so much easier when you're bringing the needle through. I'm just going to put some more puncture holes. So you'd proceed to do this all the very way down. Um, I won't do that for now. I'll just um, start the process off. As you can see, it's so much easier to just um, bring it through. Oops. Of course, the first one through, you get the needle all twisted up, but that's okay. And I've just got a little um, knot on the end here. So that will just um, catch there. Slightly hard doing this with the, the stand that I've got my um, phone seat on. So what we're now going to do is go down to the next um, hole here. And then we're going to bring it back to the previous hole. Oops, caught on my clips. I could put those little clippy bits down, which means it won't then catch on the clips, which would be good. And then again at the back, you're just going through the next hole, going sorry, through the next hole down, immediately down. So you pop out where you were, and then you're going to the next hole down from the front. And then from the back, just to the next hole down. 
and then you're going to bring it back so that you're making a constant set of stitches all the way down. So just keeping on going, we're going to go back to where we had been, pop out the hole, and as you can see, because you've pre-put those little holes in, it just makes it so much easier um, for stitching. Now, I know you could use um, a sewing machine for this. Um, I don't actually have a sewing machine, so I tend to do a lot of um, hand stitching, but I also find the hand stitching process just very um, calm and peaceful way to, to work. So I don't mind doing a bit of um, quiet stitching, especially when it's so easy where you've pre-made the holes. So again, just keeping on going down. So you're going to want to end up with a constant line of stitches um, down here. Now with the stitches, I try and not put a stitch right on the edge where the fold is because I don't want it to, ter um, to tear. So I'm trying to have stitches that actually go over where the folds are. And down here, we'll do one more stitch and then I'll pop it off, um, turn the camera off and finish doing the stitching down here. And then I will come back and show you the next step. So I'll just pop the camera off now and I'll be back shortly. Okay, so I'm back and I've finished sewing down the centre here. Um, I'll just check if I'm in focus. So as you can see, they're stitching right down the centre. So it's a continuous line of individual stitches down the front. And then at the back, because you're doing that forward and sort of back stitching, you get um, double stitches all the way down the back and I've started the process of putting um, the little holes down the side so I'm actually lining up just slightly inset from where the edge of the cardboard is my um, baking paper actually extends a little bit further over the side so I'm making sure that my um, where my stitches will be is just slightly inset from where the cardboard is to avoid tearing as well um, I just wanted to mention as well, the thread that I'm using is, um, I think it's called a crochet thread. It's a vintage thread that I got um, from an op shop and it's just a good um, strong, like it won't um, won't break when you're tugging on it. So it's got some, got some good, good strength um, to it. Now I'll just go back in focus down here. The other thing I wanted to mention um, was that I often like to have, um, and I use this when I'm sewing, it's just a, actually a drying mat. I think I mentioned it previously. It's got sort of like a felty top on it and a padded um, section on it. And it works quite well for when you're wanting to, for example, put your little um, holes in where you're going to do the stitching because you can push all the way through. Um, and I'm, this is just a, um, a chopping board. I think it's an Ikea chopping board, very large one that I just use underneath. So it doesn't matter even if the needle gets through um, to that. So you just want to go down again, um, putting your, your holes in slightly inset um, from where the cardboard is. Again, make sure you don't put the hole right on the edge where you've got the fold, um, put it offset from, from that. So I'll do that and then we're going to do the same process again. Um, I might come up a bit closer and show you while I do it. Dropped the needle. So we're going to come through from the back. It's always easy to actually look at the back when you're coming through. There we go. And then you're going to go down the hole that you've already put in. Hold it like that might be a bit easier and then you're going to might, might be easy to look at the back again going to come up through the hole that you've already put in and you want to then come back to make that continuous line of stitching oops cool. catching on everything always the way when you're filming it's always everything that will go wrong will go wrong but it's all okay Okay, so going down to the next hole. Got a bit of Travis Sparkle, Travis Fur in there. And then you're gonna come out, go down to the next hole again from the back. And it helps if you just hold the two layers together to make sure that your needle's coming through where your holes are. So we're now gonna come back and um, to where the, that hole was. So we do get that continuous line of stitches. And then going the next one down from the back. And then next one down from the front. 
So on the front you're going forward um, and then back um, and then on the back you're always going um, forward if that makes sense going continuing down the page whereas here we're going to go back because the last step we went forward and so you'll be able to tell if you do something and end up with the stitches wrong you won't have a continuous line on the front and you'd have some different stitching on the back so on the back we're going to keep going down the page on this stitch we're still going forward going down the page on the back And then we're going back on this step to get that continuous line. So I think that's probably enough of um, watching me um, stumble with the stitching, holding it up. Um, so I'll finish stitching down that side and I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side as well. And then I'll come back. Okay, so I'm back having completed my inner stamp storage display section using folded baking paper and then stitches down the middle, down the sides and across the top and across the bottom there and as you can see I've started to arrange some of the um, bird and butterfly stamps in there. So um, nice folding section as you can see it's a more flimsy sort of um, cardboard so what I'm going to be doing is to be putting it onto a stiffer cardboard and we get this um, stiffer cardboard in our weekly farm box vegetable and fruit delivery um, that comes from local farms out in the Gippsland region which is where we're based and so yeah really good to support the the farmers they've done it tough during COVID with disruption to supply chains and restaurants and things um, being closed but we've just been so impressed with the um, freshness of the food so yeah the service we get is called Farm Box Co so if you happen to be in Melbourne look them up I'm not sure what area they deliver too but yeah super super happy with them and we get some cardboard that I can repurpose and use in my crafting so what we're going to be doing and I've already um, done this step is using cutting the cardboard to the size of um, the half folded shape so to the size of that not to the the whole size but you're going to cut two pieces so essentially one is going to be um, affixed to the back and one is going to be affixed to the front um, and what you want to do is you want to leave a section down the middle um, where the spine um, can go so it has room to do that do that folding over process so I'll just put this aside for a moment what I'm using on the other side of the cardboard is some of this IKEA wrapping paper so it's got a nice geometric shape with little flowers um, creams greens and reds and a little bit of white um, before I put, stuck my cardboard down and I stuck my cardboard down with um, double-sided um, cello tape um, you could use any sort of double-sided tape you could use glue as well um, I just sometimes find with the glue that you'll get a bit of a bumpy bumpy surface on the cover if you get sort of lumps of glue or other things um, so sometimes the double-sided tape works better for that purpose but before I stuck the cardboard on what I did was I put a fold along um, where I wanted it to be level actually did it on this end didn't I so I lined it up with where the design was to make sure that the paper didn't end up on a weird angle which would be okay but um, I just thought on this occasion I won't um, do that so we do need to um, before we affix the um, album on um, the inner album we need to stick down each of these sides now you'll see I've cut um, each of the corners um, I did them sort of separately in separate pieces so that when we fold this up they're not going to be overlapping um, with each other or just yeah they'll be just just touching so um, I'll do one I just need to grab out my my glue this is an older glue that I found in the drawer but it seems to be working okay so we'll give that a whirl I'm going to use glue on the inside because this is all going to be covered so it doesn't worry me if it's looking a little bit um, a little bit lumpy and I probably should be putting something under it there but that's okay I didn't get glue on the surface so we're just gonna put the glue in there um, I'm gonna take this little section up as well um, because 
because we want it that just to, to cover there. I might even put some glue on the inside Once again. And I might do the same here. So just gluing. So I hope you are all having a wonderful day. The weather here is rather strange again. So sunshine, wind, rain, storm seems to be the theme um, for this year. A lot of extreme weather events. Um, I've actually got a friend up in northwest Victoria and last night she um, had just put in her seedlings yesterday and then they got the um, extreme weather warning for giant hailstones and storm um, sweeping through. I haven't heard yet how she how she fared, but hopefully her and her seedlings are doing okay. So we're going to continue around um, and do that. Just going to get that stuck down. Oops. Try not to tear the paper. Just a bit of glue along there. So yeah, sun is shining outside right now um, and I'd taken Travis the pup up to the, the park just before this and he got a nice walk in. And it was actually warm in the sun, but um, yeah, it looks like there's grey gray, gray clouds on the horizon, so who knows. It's kind of hard to know, but I don't mind if there's a bit of bad weather on the weekend, it's a good chance to do some, do some crafting and record some of it and hopefully give you some ideas about what you can do too particularly these um, sorts of ideas where you can re repurpose things hopefully that you have around the home. Maybe some cardboard, some baking paper, some old wrapping paper. Don't worry if you get some tiny little crinkles in. As I say, this side's not going to be, not going to be on show. And over here. Maybe this glue is a little bit more gloopy than it normally would be, but that is okay. As long as it sticks, we'll be happy with it. Okay, so that's what that looks like on the on the front. Pretty straight, pretty happy with that. Right, so I'll put my glue away. I've got really dry hands at the moment, so I might even just put a tiny bit of hand cream on because otherwise my hands will look like lizards. It's a nice orange blossom. Hand cream smells delightful. Okay, excuse me while I do my hand cream. Okay, so we're going to now um, affix our inner stamp album into it. Just get that stuck down a bit more. So again, I've put some of the double-sided um, tape on it. Might even just put one more piece down there to make that a bit more even and make sure it is going to is going to stick. Scissors, Hopefully this won't be what like watching um, paint dry. If it is, I'll chop it out a little bit and get to the next the next stage of decorating the front. But we'll try. Okay, so I'm back. I'm glad I turned the video off because I do think it um, is a lot like watching paint dry to watch me try and remove the double-sided tape, particularly where it's on the baking paper and you need to actually catch it onto a bit of the paper or a bit of the um, thread to make sure it um, properly sticks. So I have stuck down the back um, and I've now removed the double-sided um, tape other side. So I'm now ready to um, adhere the other side. So what I'm going to do is basically just make sure that it um, folds over and I'll adhere it on like this because you want to make sure it's going to close the way that you want it to close and you just want to make sure as part of this process that you just square it up um, as much as possible press it all down so that it's all properly st stuck i didn't put anything um on the spine because the spine's just going to be um sort of yeah sitting sitting within and held down by the fact that there's tape, um, double-sided tape holding all the rest of it, rest of it closed. So yeah, really pleased with that. As you can see, even when I'm flipping it all around, um, the stamps aren't falling out. So that's a really um, good thing. So that's the outside done. Um, if you'd like, we can do some decorating of the cover. Um, I might do something 
along the themes of, and you can actually see the difference in thickness of the two because the stamps, obviously I haven't sort of fully filled it up yet, but the stickers are definitely um, a lot thicker with the wads, um, whereas the stamps are gonna be a lot thinner. That's also the reason that I haven't done any additional um, stitching. As you'll see in my sticker album, um, I put a range of um, stitching to hold each of the sections. Again, you can go with either approach. If you're going to do this stitching, you do it again um, just through the cardboard the same way that we did the ones outside. I did it once I actually arranged my stickers so that I could work out and put it exactly where the um, partitions were. I was also able with some of the pockets which were a bit deeper to put some stitches and just make the um, pocket shallower without having to change the folding just by putting stitches around so that these sit up at the level that I want them to sit up at. So I'm thinking for our cover of this one, um, we might do um, something similar, but different enough that I'll be able to see and distinguish what it is that we have. So I might get some materials together for this one, and then we can do a bit of collaging together just to finish the album off. So I will see you back shortly. Okay, so I'm back and I've gathered a few provisions for decorating the front cover. I've used the same, um, I've got the same old um, book just in a different section from it which is an old Pears encyclopedia um, and just using the pages it's an encyclopedia that was all falling to bits so I don't feel bad about um, tearing it up I've got some lace got a beautiful um, Switzerland serviette now you can use serviettes as part of collage here's the one that I've um, torn it from what you need to do with the serviette is remove um, the layers or separate them from each other so you just have the top decorated layer so you'll find most serviettes are three ply there might even be some that are four ply and there might be some that are two ply but just be careful sometimes you'll think oh, I'm to the final layer but you'll actually find there's another layer there so it's beautiful it's got mountains Swiss mountains um, and the Swiss wildflowers that we've been lucky enough to, to see when we used to travel the world freely and not even fully appreciate it probably. So, um, and I've also got some vintage lace here just from my, my very plentiful collection of lace. I'll just show you, this is just one of the, the containers of my um, vintage lace. I've got about eight of them, I think. So plenty to choose from. So I'm thinking sort of that down that side. I've also got some stamps. Um, so I got a mixed batch of stamps and as I went through them, I found some that I thought I'll keep for myself. So this one um, is Silver Jub Jubilee, but got the year 1977, which um, was the year that I was born. So now you know my age. Um, I just liked this little, um, what is it? Republic Fr of Francais. So French stamp. I'm not sure who it is, but I just, yeah, I like that little figure. And then this one was so funny. Um, we had on our last travels in Europe, which was well before um, COVID, um, travelled to the Abruzzo region and um, had some lovely guests, I'm sorry, lovely hosts there. We were the guests of the hosts um, and stayed at this fantastic little bed and breakfast. And they recommended we visit the local um, national park and visit this particular um, castle, so Rocca di Calascio. Calascio or Calascio, I'm not sure. Um, and so we visited this um, national park and yeah, climbed up in, into the castle. And so it was just so funny um, amongst this batch of random un unsorted stamps from around the world to find this very um, sort of not really well known, not particularly um, touristy um, to find that, that stamp in the mix. So I thought I'll keep that stamp for myself, won't use that in my um, sort of yeah, junk journals or, or scrapbooks. I'll pop it on the cover as well because for a stamp book it's probably worthwhile having some, having some stamps on the cover. Also got just a nice little bit of ribbon that I thought went well with the, the colour theme and a little um, embroidered sort of um, embellishment. It's not sitting totally flat so we might have to have to deal with that. Um, and yeah, the serviette. So let's just have a play around with how we want them to be laid out. So I'm thinking we'll put the label for the folder somewhere like that. I think we'll lay the lace down like this. Um, 
perhaps something like that, I'm not sure whether we want to put it down like that or maybe something across here or maybe we put our little stamp or maybe this one would look good down the bottom where would we like to put that one maybe we put that one up there and then where will we put her will she go down nicely there with the reds Probably move the serviette up a little bit more. So something like that is what I oh and then this one, where are we gonna put him? Could always put it coming off that one. Or could go down here. Could sit down there. No, that's a bit weird just sitting off itself off the side. Probably not there. We'll work out somewhere or if it indeed is going to stay on there. So I'm just going to get down some of the other cardboard um, and we can use that as our um, sticky sticky cardboard. I'm just going to use some UHU stick glue. So I guess we'll first of all um, have to just remember where those pieces were going to go. We will first of all stick down um, our title. Sorry for the squeaky chair, I really should stop that squeaking, but alas, not done. So plenty of glue, cover it all up. Hard to see whether it's actually sitting straight, but hopefully it's mostly straight. Smooth the edges down, make sure that's all done. Okay, then next up we're gonna have our serviette coming across won't we something like that um I might just use a bit of my just to get rid of stop that being so sticky so I don't want my serviette to stick Now with the serviettes, they are a bit more fragile, so you just need to take it a little bit easier with the glue on them. As you can see, it was trying to tear just there. Sorry, I just bumped the frame holding my phone. And don't worry if it does tear a bit, it's just going to add to that rustic um, sort of effect because I've purposely torn all around the edges as well just to make them look like little fragments. Now I don't, I actually quite like to get a little bit of, um, a little bit of crinkles in the surface because I think it just adds to the effect. But you just want to make sure all the edges particularly, if you find any edges that aren't, I actually just put a little bit of glue on the top and then smooth them down that way. So I'm just going to do a little bit there. And you can even put a bit over the surface and just tap at it again, and it will work pretty well, I think. Now you've got a little bit of, I might just get rid of that little bit that's there. Let's take that off. I don't need that strange little bit that was happening there. So I'm pretty happy with how that's um, sealed down. Might just put a bit over this end. Great, now what were we gonna put on next? We'll put on probably, might put the lace down. So this will end up making our cardboard quite gloopy, I think. But I have found this UH glue does actually work very well, even on fabrics. Here's hoping it does today, although it is coming out a little more gloopy than I would love, but that's okay. Let's hope we've got enough on there to stick it down. I just put a bit more along that section. Oops, gloopy, gloopy, gloopy. I 
mean, you could use a PVA as well, um, but with my other one that I did, I just used a UHU and it worked, it worked fine. And there's my squeaky chair again, so. Just wanna get that bit out. Again, I might just put a bit of glue on the surface and just smoosh it in just to get it to stick down properly. Just put a bit of glue in there. Glue there, there. Oops. Glue falling over. And you will, of course, end up with very gluey hands, but that comes off very easily. So maybe with this end, I just need to smush it down a bit so it's not extending. I might even trim it off, actually, when I'm done, if it doesn't, if it needs it. Otherwise, it might be okay there. So I think I'm speaking very quietly, but um, just, yeah, it feels like that's all, all sticking down quite nicely, apart from maybe up there. So what we might do is even just put a bit of glue on the surface here might have actually been the better way um, to do it I'm thinking that's actually what I did with that one um, but this has worked as well oops let's get a bit more down here on to this end but yeah I think that's actually how I did it that way so I probably should have done it this way so if you're doing it you might find it easier just to put a good um, strip of glue down there now going to have this one down the bottom wasn't I with the stamp with my birth year on it it's going to put that one there and have this one up here do I want anything else I've got a bit of red check um, a ribbon maybe would that go nicely just to bring that red element up from elsewhere in the design can I just keep my ribbons on my wooden um, X and try not to stab my finger as I put the pin in. Very silly. Okay, how would we like that to go? Would that be nice? Or do we want to do something across that way? Keep the because I've got a vertical element across there, so maybe we'd want to do something down here even. Oh. Hard to know. Or we could know too much red down there, I think, already. Just going to trim off that little bit that's sticking out of the ribbon. What do we think? Do we like this? Or do we just go back to where we had it originally? Do we want to balance that one out with having this one perhaps across stamp up the right way would always be good. Having this one across here. I'm going to have to just stand up to have a look at it. Let's see how it's looking from there. Yeah, I think I like that. So it's got the nice balancing, balancing elements. So let's start by putting this one down the bottom. Um, use a bit of my leftover baking paper because it's real. Again, I've found the UHU sticks down the fabric. Um, ribbon quite well so feel free to use that stick down our stamp these are used stamps so they no longer have a sticky sticky surface on them stick that down let's get 
this one stuck down. Let's stick this one down, down here. Or would we rather, it? maybe it's over here. I'm just gonna go with something different than what I'd originally planned. How do I feel about that there? I'm gonna just, yeah, I think I like that. I think it balances a bit more. I don't know if that's straight, but anyway, that's fine. And then we'll do our flag up here. Um, I was going to have it that way, wasn't I? Yep. Our castle up here. Maybe I'll put that actually over here. I don't like it there. Okay, I just need to lift it up to have a little look how I'm feeling about it all. Yeah, I like that. Everything's stuck down. We'll just let the glue set on that one. It's all stuck down, isn't it? So there you go. There is the cover of our stamp album. So some stamps and some other nice bits and pieces. Oops, a bit of glue has stuck there. Um, and now I can proceed to put all my um, stamps in. And I'll take a final photo and add that to the at uh, the end um, so you can see how it looks once all the, the stamps are inside. Thank you so much again for um, tuning in and for bearing with me as I bumble my way through. Have a wonderful day or wonderful evening, whatever time you're watching it. And I hope to see you on here again soon. Bye everyone.